Jill and Carter. A lot of talk, Drew Resnahaus telling all the prospective teams, if you're not in the top 10, don't bother knocking on our door. How about that? <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, he told Adam Schefter they're only taking in-person visits with top 10 teams. Mm-hmm. Taking the Dion route with that, right? It's well, very Zava. <laughs> very, very Zava. <laughs> well, we got Zava. Kind of like the, what Dion said, though, Rich, if you... It, yeah, was it the Giants not, wanted him to yeah, come well, in? This was back in the day when there were interviews at the Combine mm-hmm. and they would just they, they weren't scheduled. It would be a free-for-all where coaches and scouts would pull a prospect into their meeting room mm-hmm. and you didn't know who was pulling you in until they said, hey, we're with the Giants. And so Dion would walk into, be pulled into a room and say, do you all have a top five pick? And they would say no. And he goes, I'm out of here. <laughs> You're not getting me. He was, it was factual. And when I heard this, because, you know, Jalen Carter um, – as we all know, um, at the Combine, had to leave the Combine to face charges in Georgia mm-hmm. and then returned to the Combine and told everyone that he's going to be working this thing out and he's innocent. And that's – we've seen that before. Um, and we've also heard how he's been removed off of draft boards after his pro day, which was patently disappointing. For you to have a poor pro day – where people are talking about whether you're in shape or not or whether you're committed or not, that's really tough because your pro day is set up for you to succeed. You're on your home campus. You got your coaches. It's all scripted for you to not look good and leave people walking away going, what's up with that is rare. The only other one that I recall was Teddy Bridgewater at a poor pro day. Mm -hmm. So Drew Rosenhaus doing Drew Rosenhaus things, which is, Getting out there, getting a word out there, fighting a PR battle, knowing that teams read stuff, hear stuff, everyone talks, everyone talks, everyone says things, and then all of a sudden, your player falls down draft boards, and he's now saying, hey, we're not visiting teams outside of the top 10, so if you think we're falling out of the top 10, you're out of your mind, because the way we're thinking about it is if you're falling, you, you've you fallen out of Jalen Carter if you're not in the top 10. You're saying we're falling out of the top 10? Well, guess what? If you're not in the top 10, you've fallen out of Jalen Carter's market. And you could say that's all well and good. But this is also a guy when Willis McGahee had a knee injury, was sitting next to him on the couch on draft night knowing the cameras were on him. He popped on the phone making it look like he's making deals for Willis McGahee to be drafted in the first round. And he wasn't talking to anybody. Oh, really? He did that on purpose. Make it look like stuff's happening, oh. which is what an agent is supposed to do. And the reason when I saw this today, I'm like, let's talk about it, because this is exactly what Lamar Jackson is missing. I should be hearing, you know, who's interested in Lamar, this, that, the other thing. You know what Lamar's doing right now? He's taking this visit. He's going to this spot. Do you know where Lamar is right now? He's in Vegas and he's not there to go see a show. You know what he's doing? He's in New England, and he's not going there to visit Cheers. <laughs> Lamar! You know, like that's the sort of stuff. Like, put Lamar Jackson front row at a Celtics game. Next to Meek Mill. This is what you need to do. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not put him front row if, whenever the Celtics and the Sixers play each other? Do they play each other over the next week? I in the final week of the season, do me a favor, that, look that up. Look that up. He needs like crisis management. He needs he to needs be put like out one of those. There. Wa- you know who's the like the Washington? Remember, Kerry Washington played some kind of like fixer type person and scandal oh, or whatever. He needs like one of those type people to come in there. Olivia, and she needs. He, he needs an Olivia. Pope. Olivia Pope. That's what it was. <laughs> Didn't watch the show, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, he needs that to come in. Well, that's what I'm saying is that Jalen Carter. The word on the street is he's falling. He, he team's taken off the draft board. And he's falling out of the top 10. And an agent, Drew Rosenhaus, tells Adam Schefter, well, guess what? You're falling out of Jalen Carter if you're not in the top 10. And suddenly you're talking and it changes a narrative. And that does matter. It really does. Six or Celtics tonight. I Let's thought go. so. I just wanted to then confirm this that. This is what needs to be done. Meek Mill, where is it? Is in it Boston. In Boston. Oh. <laughs> Meek Mill should be buying a ticket on the floor tonight watching his Sixers, and his guest should be Lamar Jackson. Let's go. Rich, meet Meek Mill. Hey, meet Meek Mill at, like, camera one. Tell him. Meek. Seat geek. Whatever, you know. (laughs) 
Hi, this is Meek for Seeky. I shouldn't even. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, just go right now. Get two tickets. I think you know how to do it. You don't have to go on a secondary ticket yeah, market. They'll but be go, free, let's actually. Let's go. Yeah. Get, the t- get two seats right courtside. There's Lamar. Hey, Patriot fans watching your Sixers and watching the Celtics. Lose to the Sixers? Hey. You just heard that Mac Jones might be on the market. Here I am in Boston. Boy, do I love this place. Shouldn't you love me? Get out there. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 